Hello and welcome to this video series where I have the privilege to take you through the steps from a raw conversion to the final image retouching in Photoshop um, on this beautiful fashion editorial shot created by my friend Per Florian Appelgren, an uh, internationally published photographer from Cologne, Germany. I'm happy to share the link to his website in the description below so that you can check out his work and get in touch. And uh, I'm thrilled to take you through the image and to show you how we came from the raw version of this image to the final result that was published recently. And if you're interested in all the steps from developing the images in Capture One to the final retouching process in Adobe Photoshop, and if you would like to see and learn how and especially why I do things, then just stay tuned and let's dive in to the first steps. So right now we are in Capture One, which is my weapon of choice when it comes to raw conversion and creating looks for uh, retouching. Um, that being said, you can find a link in the description of the video to the website of Capture One, where you can download a 30 day free trial to check out this amazing software and to, Im, uh, to experience the differences yourself and the benefits that it gives you in your color conversion and everything raw. And um, I would like to show you uh, this image, um, as I said in the, in the intro already, and to show you the steps and the thoughts behind what we did to come up with the initial look. And um, as you can see, this uh, image is lit in a way that it emphasizes one side of the face dramatically. And we want to enhance that and also put a warmer and more moody atmosphere to the image. We are going to do that by first taking on uh, the curve and we will lighten the dark midtones to, um, let's see, something maybe here, something like that. And um, I think we are gonna bring down the highlights to uh, a point where it, let's see, mm, somewhere here, I think is a good base. And what we want to do now is to first alter the white balance. And I think we are going much warmer, maybe something, something or maybe a little more, maybe 50. And we are going to lower this where to give it a little green notch, maybe a little more, let's see here, yes. And um, I think we still need to lighten it up a bit. How far do we go? Mm. Maybe one more. Yes. And uh, what happens when we boost the contrast a bit? Mm. Maybe not so much like this, like so. I think a little brightness so that we are coming into the more the right area. And now uh, this high dynamic range has a very powerful impact if you use it right. So if you if you boost it up, uh, nothing much happens. But if you go down, you can see that the edges of the images of, of, the, of the image go into the right direction. So they tone down and I think we are pretty much right where we are here. And we lighten up the shadows a bit to make it a little more soft. If you push the Alt button and click this arrow here, you can see the difference that we just created. And I think by darkening the background and the highlights a bit, the model pops a, bit, a little better out of the image. And um, what we do now, or what we can do now, 
is that we um, work on the noise reduction. But in this case, if we zoom in, I think we don't have to adjust anything here. The noise looks good. And um, I would like to take out the sharpening completely. Mm, that is because if you, if you look here, um, if, it, if we leave it as it was with 180, the image gets sharpened already. This also enhances details that we don't want to deal with in the retouching process. So in this case, we just take it out and see that the image gets slightly softer. And um, what we could do now and what you, what you see is when we zoom out a little, um, we can see that we can use the color editor to uh, to bring in some more warmth and uh, some more color into the skin. And therefore, we can use this uh, direct color editor from Capture One, which is a very useful tool when used in the right way. So you click on it, and then uh, once you find the spot that you would like to work on, you can you can see that it switches to these four arrows and by moving it to the to the right side you adjust the hue and by moving it up and down you um, adjust the saturation and uh, let's see where we are going here i think something around 1.4 1.5 in the hue shift to the oranges uh, enhances the image and if we take on the saturation to maybe something around 14, well, no, for like something like, like, like this. Uh, if we check the arrow, you can see what it does. It brings in some more of the warmth and uh, the color. Where's my color editor here? Uh, and this is what I think does well to the image. And um, the next thing I would like to do in this stage is uh, work in um, with the layers. And I would like to use the new addition to, um, to capture one, which are the style brushes. I don't know if you have tried them, but I would encourage you to do so. And we will just put the tool by pushing control uh, on the Mac and clicking here. You can add a tool, which is the style brushes. And there are, I will move them out. There are uh, style brushes that it gives you, um, which have got presets. And we want the dodge and the burn ones. The, the amazing thing is here, if you use the dodge tool and if you change the brush size and if you start brushing, um, for instance, uh, we want to emphasize the hair strands and the light and the dark strands so that it gives a little more dimension to the hair. You can start painting and you can see that it uh, here, that it just uh, created a new layer. And if you push the control button and click uh, on the image, you can see um, that it is set to auto mask and that it also links the brush with the layer, which has a great benefit. So if you switch back to the background and you would change the brush, and if you click here again to the dodge layer, it just puts the settings back to the way you left when you were working on this very layer. So let's get back here. Um, the flow is set to four. Let's pump it up slightly to eight and the opacity is 100. And we will boost some of the, and some of the highlights. Uh, I think now eight is just a little too much. Let's take it down a bit. like so, just bring in some, some light into the hair. And the same 
is happening when you take uh, the burn one. Because now I would like, oh, and how do you change the, the uh, size of the brush? You can push control and option and then just click and drag uh, on the image. And the settings here are also uh, at four, which is fine, I guess. Eight was slightly too much. So I can paint in. And the mask, you can, you can see here, if you push the button M, you can see that the mask ap uh, appears here. And I can push M again and you can hide the mask, but still paint and bring in this dimension. All right. And um, the other thing that I would like to try is to match the color um, on her chest uh, more to the color of her face. And therefore, I would like to create a new um, adjustment layer and call it chest and use, use my, my brush. And this time I would like to activate uh, with the letter M the mask. And um, I, I'm gonna try the auto mask feature, but I am um, going to increase the flow. And auto masking is enabling me to roughly paint around the skin here. And if I leave the edge, right between the two circles, it should activate the auto mask feature and uh, help me create this mask uh, in a very efficient way. So I can paint down here and then let go. And once again, I'm gonna paint here and continue. And there you can see how it's snapped. Let's go back here, here we go again. It doesn't need to be perfect since we can always work on the mask edge. Pushing the letter E for, uh, I'm, I'm gonna put the style brushes here now out of my way. And uh, with E and pen pressure deactivated, I will um, paint these parts of the mask away so that there is no color spill. Apple Z is my friend. And by switching between B and E, I can switch between my brush and the eraser to finish off the mask. If you're wondering, I'm using a Wacom tablet to paint and draw all my masks and uh, I'm highly recommending you to do the same because working with a mouse in the professional retouching world is not just a challenge, I think it's uh, impossible to create very decent results. So, um, now I'm gonna take down the flow and the opacity to draw some kind of a gradient here so that we can fade out the adjustment in, in this area. By pushing M, I can reveal or hide the mask. And now I can create a curve, for instance, to um, create uh, the color correction. And what I would like to do is I would like to slightly lighten the, the chest. See, like this. And pull out a little blue so that it gets slightly more yellow. Uh, in this case, we need to be a little careful so that it doesn't get too colorful 
but the good thing is that we can work uh, on the layer's opacity so that if this was too much, which it definitely was, we can take it down to maybe 40%, which does the job for me, I think. All right, so this is what I would do in, uh, let, let's zoom out to uh, see the full image. This is what I would do in uh, Capture One. And if we compare the before and after by pushing Command R for reset or Command Z, uh, uh, Command Z, we're going back to all the settings, we can toggle between what we did. And this is pretty mind blowing, I think, what can be done in Capture One. Uh, the only thing left that I would like to do is to crop the image and make it uh, a little more, uh, let's say, interesting or dra dramatic uh, in the composition. And therefore, I'm moving it up just to cut off the, the top of the hair and uh, just to cut off parts of the tie. And um, of course, Pear allowed me to do that. I would never crop an image um, if the photographer wouldn't be fine with it or if it's uh, not in the brief. So um, always make sure that you, you uh, if it's not your own image and you're working um, commissioned by someone, uh, either a client, uh, an agency or a photographer, make sure that the crop is the way um, the photographer in intended it to be or retouch the full image to um, have the magazine or whoever is the recipient of the final file uh, deal with the final crop themselves. In this case, this is what we wanted to create. And um, I'm gonna go to the settings for the, uh, for the export. And in this case, I decided to go for a Photoshop file uh, in Adobe RGB and 8-bit. If everything's set correctly, um, we can export the image and take it to Photoshop. And here we are. And from here, we will continue in the next chapter.